This is the story of a shining star who has become one of the greatest fillies in history. Mon and my girl started her career running on the turf. You know, she'd won her first two starts so easily. Um, it came time to, to step her up in the stakes company in the rags to riches. And that was such a fun day. You know, she won by, I think, six lengths. And we realized that we had a potential superstar. She performed really well in the rags to riches. And obviously, I thought it was one of the best races of, by any two-year-old run on the dirt that season. Goldenrod was a really interesting day in Mon and my girl's life as a whole because it's really the only day she got beat. Um, every other time she's crossed the wire first in 14 starts. The first time around two turns, um, you know, I, I don't think she really responded to the aggressive approach down the lane that she was given. She was a heavy favorite that day and I think uh, I couldn't blame myself, you know. I think we learned that throughout her career that, you know, she, she uh, doesn't need to be encouraged a whole lot. She can do it on her own. Uh, that's how much talent she has. While her two-year-old season gave a generous glimpse of her potential, she would face an immediate challenge in her three-year-old debut in the Rachel Alexandra Stakes against the likes of champion Wonder Godot and She's a Julie. When she made her move, it was it was it was a very impressive sweeping move, and you know she won clear. It, it was an encouraging race. I thought we found out she was able to uh, do things not only on the lead but come from off of it. So it showed a new dimension. This impressive victory would kickstart what has become one of the greatest three-year-old seasons for fillies of all time. In April of 2018, Monomoy Girl began a legendary run of Grade 1 triumphs with a dominant performance in the Ashland Stakes at Keeneland. It was, a, you know, the first Grade 1 for her and myself, and uh, it, it was a huge accomplishment. We, that was a big enough win to turn our attention toward the Oaks. They're in the gate. And they're up in the Kentucky Oaks. She broke from the outside. I think a lot of people forget about that. When we drew that day, um, it's kind of like, wow, the 14 hole. You know, she could get hung wide going into the first turn. She did a little bit, but you know, when Florence started to ask her to go, um, I thought, you know, hope, um, you know, she's put him away, but I thought, is she moving too early? And then we obviously got a challenge from Wonder Godot. <laughs> And, um, you know, she showed that she's obviously a champion in her own right. She would not uh, let uh, one of God uh, past, uh, so she showed uh, grits and determination and uh, what, you know, superstars are, you know, uh, the willing to win those kind of races. Monomoy girl, Monomoy girl, Wonder Goods out, Monomoy girl digs down deep and she was dazzling in the Oaks. It was, it was a, obviously a really emotional win and one you dream of. I think her whole team couldn't have been prouder of her that day knew she was going to put on a show, and she did. And here comes Monomoy Girl. It still gives me chills just how impressively and how easily she did it. Monomoy Girl, home on top of the acorn. Oh, what a fabulous filly she is. Monomoy Girl wins it by three. Midnight Bizu was no match for her today. The Breeders' Cup, I mean, you know, lead, leading up to the race, she was training so well here at Churchill, we didn't have to ship or anything, and breaking from the out, outside, once again, um, against the best fillies and mares in the world, she responded big time and, you know, held off some um, future champions, future Breeders' Cup winner. Monoboy Girl at 16th to go, blue prize, then comes Midnight Bizu. Monoboy Girl has won the ditch down. One of only three fillies in history to capture the Kentucky Oaks and defeat older mares in the Breeders' Cup distaff, Monomoy Girl's victory not only secured her championship season, but placed her name among the all-time greats. However, her four-year-old season would not unfold the way her connections had planned. But even after two setbacks and an 18-month layoff, it was clear Monomoy Girl still had the passion and talent to show the world something that had never been seen before. And to think that, you know, you could have a filly accomplish what she did as a three-year-old and then uh, with all that time off, be able to come back and, and uh, you know, honestly train better, bigger, stronger, faster, work better. Being a lifelong horseman, you always hope to be associated with greatness. She really thrives on the competition. I think that's probably her best asset, the, the will to be out front and be dominant. 
She's an incredibly intelligent horse, and I do believe she knows where the wire is. I think she showed that in a few of her races. Once she clears the other horse, she doesn't really need to win by eight, nine, ten lengths. She's you know, happy enough just winning by two or three, and you know, maybe that's why she's still around at the age of five as well. It's really unheard of. I mean, it's just the longevity and how much she's been through. And to be able to compete at the grade one level is really just the um, first time I've really ever seen it from, from a top class mare. And Monomoy Girl does it again. Monomoy Girl just keeps on winning. She's definitely the best filly on May I've ever ridden in my life. The story now moves to a new chapter as Monomoy Girl steps into the sales ring. I think what is going to make her such a unique broodmare is she has that length and scope to her of a two-turn horse, but she has the look and power of a one-turn horse. Anyone that comes to sees her is going to really fall in love with her from a physical standpoint. I mean, from the side, walking to you, walking away from you. I mean, she's, she's a total package from a physical standpoint, from just beauty to size, and, and just uh, has a nice walk on her, and hopefully, you know, it's going to make some beautiful babies. Perhaps it's only once in a lifetime that a future Hall of Famer can be yours.